You will not want to miss Ham Nation today because Leo Laporte is with us and many of the hosts are here. We're going to wish you the best of the holidays, but this is one great show here at the last of 2020. Ham Nation is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash ham nation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 484. December 16th, 2020. All of us here wish you the very best of the holidays. Hello, everybody. This is Bob Heil, and we're in the Christmas spirit here, and we're on Ham Nation, tuned in to where all of us guys and gals talk about Ham Radio. It's show number 484, and uh, have the usual suspects here tonight. Uh, some of them are behind the curtain, like Amanda and George. And, but uh, Don is with us, and then we have a special guest. But let's uh, see what Gordo's got to do first. How are you doing, Gordo? It's not snowing there, is it? Uh, no, not snowing, just snowing sunshine. It was cold today. It was like 68 degrees. Um, from Rob, he says, regarding last week's Ham Nation, we do have porta potties coming to Quartz Paws, but only for those that are tent campers. I guess they're going to hide the key. And uh, Gary says, you know, Gordo, I'm now teaching my ham radio classes on Zoom throughout the country. And for those that want to see a schedule, go to Alpha Alpha 6 Golf Juliet at ARRL.net. Send them a quick email saying, tell me what your sked is for tech or general, or he's even got extra. He has some great Zoom classes on ham radio licensing. Bob, back to you. That's great. Boy, we've been doing Zooms almost every night. I did seven of them last week. <laughs> Crazy. Even did one on Wednesday because I did one to the UK. Now, if you have a club, this is the time. Clubs have, they need programming. And this is really remarkable. Uh, and, and so you want to send me a date, send uh, Gordo a date. We, we all do these, but uh, send us a date or two and uh, we'll come and join your uh, your meeting. That'll be really cool. Okie dokie. Well, I told you about our special guest. Our special guest, a lot of you talk to him maybe each week when conditions allow. It's our own Steve, W7UDI. And I'm really glad you're here, Steve. Everything okay out there? Yeah, we're doing good over here. Yeah, we had a little bit of snow, but it, it melted off. We're raining right now, but uh, the snow is on its way. All right. Man, what a station you have behind us. And that's kind of why I wanted you to come on tonight, to let everybody see what you did with the antennas. You got some, not only just gear, uh, let's uh, let's run through some of this stuff. Now, do you uh, uh, tell us about how you put all these up as we get the old... Uh, uh, the old photos up here. Are you uh, you doing most of this yourself, or what's the deal there? Actually, I, the the beam I did by myself. It uh, was going to have help from my son, but uh, he had to go to work, so I ended up uh, doing the uh, change out of the uh, TH6 to the M squared uh, by myself. But I had a little help, and uh, as we'll see here in a second, well, tell us a little bit about what you have behind you. That you in the marvelous things. Tell, tell us what you got going there. Uh, well, we have a complete S line here, uh, and then uh, up on top uh, we have a KWM2 with uh, matching 30L1s, and then uh, the, the uh, FTDX1000 uh, FT back there, and then I got a 101D here and a 3000 here, and then the amplifier 
pretty modest station, nothing super fantastic. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's really beautiful, I'll tell you. Uh, thank well, let's you. Go what, what they're driving that's uh, that's the best part and we want to want to make a, 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 a you know make kind of a neat thing out of it so i put your picture up in front so the all the guys and gals that talk to you on the net controls and there you are but uh you go ahead and not uh, narrate these as i uh, go okay through. well the, on the right is the uh the existing 80 foot tower and then the uh off to the left was uh just stacked with my son so i Taught him how to. We did that the old school way with a gin pole and uh, and the use of a, uh, a cat head or capstan, and uh, he operated that. Taught him how to how to operate, how to slip the rope, and I uh, I did the climbing and uh, and moved the gin pole around, and then we you know rigged everything, and then just put it up as a uh, father and son uh, exercise, kind of teach him how to you know. Teach him a little few tricks, uh, you know, maybe he might be able to use down the road, maybe not. There you go. Uh, there's the M squared that uh, got put up. Uh, used to be a TH6, so that's sitting on a 32-foot boom. It's uh, sitting up at about 82 feet. That ought to be scorching the airwaves. Well, there was my helper right down there to the lower right is an 85-foot uh, genie lift. It's a man lift, two-man man lift, and... Uh, Prior to getting that for the weekend, I got a rental shop that's uh, here in town that allows us to uh, um, <clears throat> rent the uh, the equipment for X number of hours. Well, they allow me to have it for the weekend. So they deliver it on a Friday, and I have up to eight hours of operating time to use it. And uh, just uh, did it on a Sunday. Ended up, uh, took two hours to take the old one down and... Uh, and put the new one up and even replace the feed line uh, going up the tower. Change it Thanks. from uh, RG213 to um, half-inch hard line. So the reason I did this, I just got out of my tower retraining. So every two years I have to go through uh, retraining for tower climbing because I have to climb at work. And it's like, oh, I'm not going to – I don't want to climb. <laughs> Any tower climber doesn't want to climb. But right. the, the reason I sent you these was, you know, earlier this year we, we had, you know, issues of people getting hurt and we've lost a few of our brethren in tower uh, climbing accidents. And here's another option to work on your antennas is rent a lift. They're <laughs> not that expensive. If, if you plan it, you know, we're going into winter now. So you're thinking about your, your tower projects next spring. Factor in, budget in a lift. And uh, they're they're not that bad as far as price, and you might be able to get it for a whole weekend. And after I did my tower climbing, I did I trimmed my trees, I did some work on the house, I cleaned the roof, I cleaned. Uh, there was a number of things I did with that uh, that lift. So just don't think of it for your tower. You can use it for other things. Yeah, well, that's the right way. That's for sure. And it looks like you have a wonderful takeoff point there from your uh, your location. That really looks great. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, uh, 30 degrees, which is over the poles towards Europe. Uh, uh, we're kind of up on a hill, and uh, uh, there's a uh, quite a advantage of uh, height above ter average terrain. So it's uh, a real good takeoff angle. That's great. even to the east. <laughs> well, it sure looks good, and I'm I'm glad that we could uh, share some of this with uh, the viewers. Of course, a lot of these people know you from Ham Nation, uh, from the Dayton. <laughs> Uh, and, and the after show nets and you're my roadie at Dayton. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I need to get back to work. I got some cables to coil. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure, I sure appreciate you coming on. And thank uh, you for we'll, having me. Uh, we'll look forward to catching up with you on uh, one of the nets afterwards. Now that I got something here at the new location, so we'll make it happen. So I uh, think so for coming on have a nice holiday with you and your family and we'll, well see you too, bob merry christmas to you and everybody in the and ham nation audience thanks for being here and supporting us okay all right well we um we want to go out to california and see what's been going on out there so gordo it's all yours take it away well thank you bob and uh, wow 
What a year that we've all endured, a troubled year indeed, but what a great decade that we've had a great time here on Ham Nation. So let's take a look and see what the heck is going on with all that you and I planned over 11 years ago when you said, Gordo, I'm in the area. Can uh, Sarah and I stop by? And I said, Susie and I and the cats are ready. We had a good talk. And then you noticed behind my uh, right shoulder the reel-to-reel that I have covered up to keep the dust out. And you go, well, then we started talking about podcasts. Then you told me, well, uh, you know, the rest is history. So, wow, a decade ago. (laughs) And Ray Forever Ray, always jumping in there. We uh, saw him at uh, Quartz Fest. There's a real ham that just jumps in there and makes ham radio happen. And, of course, TX Engineering, our strong supporters, uh, they've always been there, always with great info. And look at this. There is Joe and Don. They're the kit guys. And you can be assured that we're going to see a lot more kit videos coming soon. Now, Tamitha couldn't be with us uh, tonight. But she wanted to uh, say hi to everybody on uh, Ham Nation's uh, end of uh, (laughs) the woeful 2020 year. She's licensed and she's on the air. You bet she is. And, of course, we remember a few months ago when Amanda, and we all voted for Amanda, was out there making uh, great food. Uh, Jeff was brave enough to eat it. And everybody did well thereafter. Amanda also in charge of our chat room. And, of course, Valerie, uh, either local DX or all over the world DX. She's always there with a great signal and helping us work DX. And, of course, I'm out there with Susie making sure everybody gets well microwave. And um, Bob said, you know, we got to have how-to stuff on Ham Nation. So we did a segment on how to find noise. <laughs> right in my own house, Susie and I found that it was our fax machine that was a noisemaker. But then we said, wait a minute, there's noise on two meters. And we found out that the noise was coming from LED light bulbs. We reported that to all sorts of people in the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary, plus the U.S. Coast Guard now has mandates for LEDs aboard small passenger vessels that make noise, that they can't make a certain amount of noise. And, of course, Bob and I have been telling you, you got to use good coax. Steve will tell you, you got to use good coax. Look at that stuff on the right. I would almost consider that leaky coax. You got to use coax. You can't run more than two megawatts into the coax or else the center conductor could migrate and short out to the shield. This was brand new coax. And Tracy says, I've never seen this before. Neither have I. Wow. So if ever you have a direct short and coax, don't look for a pin unless you've been bad in it, but rather migrating center conductor. That's Darn Arnold, W6 GPS. He brought to the USA and right here to uh, Ham Nation, the Outbacker antennas. And now he brought the AV maps. Well, maybe not now, but about eight years ago. And the AV maps really were the way to navigate via GPS. In fact, so much important that some of the hams at our local public safety network in their helicopters said, hey, we got to try some APRS, well, aeronautical mobile, in case of disasters and disaster preparedness. Jeff, thank you so much for your support. And thanks to Mother Nature for their support. Look what happens to a straight beam, which could be a microwave that refracts, not reflects, but refracts off of a different density. This is amazing. See the shadow to the right? That's a boat whose reflection is seen by a temperature inversion. So imagine what happens to microwaves. And how's your dog? How's your cat? How's your gerbil? We've been tagging them here on Ham Nation on the 222 megahertz ham band, uh, low power beacon. Yes, they give my call sign. Yes, I'm in control of my cat. No, I guess I'm not. Susie and I definitely are not control of our animals, but we can pick them up. Pastor Jason has been on uh, many occasions, and that was Kevin. Unfortunately, a silent key, but Kevin, an Eagle Scout, extra class operator, and 
not just an operator, but I mean on the air continuously as extra class, both of them. And then one day uh, during our uh, Ham Nation 10-year reign, we, we all got a warning notice. Those of us on uh, uh, the 1.2 gigahertz band, uh, it was a strong notice saying that the FAA uh, has uh, a good portion of 1.2 and take down your repeaters. So we abide by the rules, except when we're down at the beach. <clears throat> Oh, no, there's a beach rule that says we can't play ham radio on Thanksgiving. <laughs> and there's Sarah in the background laughing. There's Susie. <laughs> the girl's got a kick out of this, me going to almost jail. Oh, boy. Thank you, John Amadeo, for Tim, who comes on and uh, shows off ham radio. Ray, for getting the station all set up. That was super. And George, our own George, he gets down to board level. Look at this class E, not A, not A, B, not B, but E amplifier. Wow. This is good stuff to get down to board level on. And, of course, getting your hands dirty, always important for Ham Nation viewers. Uh, this was the Cushcraft beam who's uh, all over the country, including Amanda's. Uh, the bolt got loose. The traps wiggled did not make contact anymore, and rather than buy a new trap, no, just get a nut driver and tighten that mama up. <laughs> and those of you with the imported uh, 9 dB gain dual band antennas uh, that were uh, going to be low-cost competition to Comet and Diamond, you cannot beat Comet and Diamond. They don't leak. After a rainstorm, look what we did to the cheap import dual band fiberglass antenna. Poured out uh, a lot of DBs there. And Anderson, you got to watch out. Get them from a name brand Anderson provider because those that aren't, as you can see, they don't hold up well to any types of current. Speaking of air currents, we trapped over this past uh, year uh, some tropospheric ducting and uh, the amateur television network, .org, ATN.org, said, wow, we're getting signals from all over the place. Well, about eight years ago, we got a signal on uh, 426 megahertz all the way from Paul, KH6HME, now a silent key, all the way in Hawaii. Wow, that's DX. And, of course, tuners, we've had LDG helping sponsor us. They were great. BioNO, Kevin and his team came up with a new battery technology that said uh, lithium iron phosphate. I don't know if it's going to work. Well, these are the cells inside those uh, uh, lithium iron phosphate bio NO batteries. And Kevin also gives a discount to uh, ham operators because all we add for emergency communications. Jim Ford says, well, if I'm locked into COVID, I'm going to play uh, loop antennas. And that's a uh, Russian uh, capacitor up at the top and uh, a regular capacitor at the bottom. By golly, he had resonance. Lit up every television in Costa Mesa. And there's Tracy and Jody and my wife Susie on the right. And we're all looking up. What are you looking at? Well, we're listening. See the shortwave radio down there on the bottom? That's tuned in to 5 megahertz for WWV, far away from where we were. And bango! When the moon just happened to cross the sun, and we were in, where were we, Susie? Idaho? Yeah, Idaho or Wyoming. Yeah, Idaho. or We were somewhere out there. Bango! Solar eclipse, but we sure learned a lot about 75 and 160 meters. And, of course, George is again there telling us how to solder. <laughs> we appreciate George. We didn't realize that tending the uh, circuit board connections really could make a great difference. Chip and Janet, Janet, manager of Ham Radio Outlet in Anaheim and Chip K7JA, um, they, they told us how to get on the air at the beach big time, but you got to do your Thanksgiving turkey, and we're still getting Ham Nation QSL cards. And, Ray, <laughs> look at the smile on all of their faces. They said, um, we've got a small radios coming, and the 705, wow, absolutely spectacular. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Uh, we've got uh, all of the activity out there. And 7AGE, uh, Randy is out there. And um, uh, Randy is continuously uh, filling the Internet with great copy and will continue to do so. Randy, thank you so much for all the band openings you've been telling me about uh, during uh, some of the maritime automatic uh, position reporting system. Wow, Randy, what a guy. And, of course, now that uh, um, we have uh, the ARISS and the International Space Station squawking not only slow scan television, this from the Russian module, but also crossband repeat. Rosalie White, formerly with the ARRL, now really representing uh, ARISS, Amateur Radio uh, International Board, the space station. ARISS is making a big difference to getting more kids involved. Bob and Sarah, wow, uh, we survived this year. We've had a great time, 10 years. Aren't they looking good? But my final sign-off at every ham fest is to find the oldest ham, the one that is going to help drive out the COVID virus. What we do is Susie comes up with the best juicy pickles all in the Midwest and East Coast and West Coast. East Coasters, stay warm. You're freezing your butt off back there. Sorry about the uh, superstorm, but you'll survive. Anyway, we impale them on two uh, stainless steel spikes. We Tie it into a Keter, definitely not OSHA approved. And that's Dave Bell, the legendary Dave J Bell, who uh, is uh, causing uh, the pickles to light up with 110 volts and dispelling all that uh, vapor that you see to make sure that no COVID ever comes anywhere near us. So all of you on ham radio, we sure hope you have a great time. Uh, Susie's here and uh, she's going to wave uh, Santa's uh, hand and um, let me tell you, it's been a great year. And even though, whoop, there we go. <laughs> even though it's been a wild year, uh, it's been fun because at least we can talk on our ICOM America ham radios and all ham radios and uh, make contact literally with friends just like we're touching them. So let's go ahead and touch a little bit of ICOM America gear and find out what's new with ICOM. Ham for the holidays. ICOM's newest handheld amateur radio is the ID52A. Larger radio, larger color display, and louder audio. This VHF UHF digital transceiver is much more than a replacement for the ID51A. The color display is 2.3 inches for exceptional viewability, and the audio is 80% louder. This multifunction dual band D Star transceiver supports DR mode for easy access to local repeaters based on internal GPS information as well as terminal and access point modes. The ID52A also has Bluetooth for audio and data control. The IC705 is the perfect sidekick for hams who like to enjoy what both the great indoors and outdoors have to offer. It's the perfect QRP companion, base station features and functionalities at the tips of your fingers in a portable package covering HF, 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. This compact rig weighs in just over 2 pounds with RF direct sampling for most of the HF band and IF sampling for frequencies above 25 megahertz. 4.3 inch color touchscreen with live band scope and waterfall 5 watts with the BP272, 10 watts with 13.8 volt DC external, single sideband, CW, AM, FM, as well as full D-Star functions. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM radios. And ICOM invites you to enter after each episode of Ham Nation at icomamerica.com slash ham nation for some great swag prizes like t-shirts and hats, and you'll learn how you might win the monthly grand prize drawing for a new radio. For December, we've got a winner here. It's Jackson Harvey AE0LF. Jackson, congratulations. You're the winner of an IC2730A dual band mobile with optional Bluetooth. It's a dual band dual watch mobile. 
It does VHF, VHF, UHF, UHF, simultaneous receive, as well as VHF, UHF. Large high contrast display for easy visibility. There's a built-in weather channel receiver and alert. And free downloadable CS2730 programming software. And there's an optional Bluetooth module available as well. So visit icomamerica.com slash hamnation after this in each episode and register to win. Sign up, good luck, and don't forget to follow Icom America Inc. on Facebook and Twitter. And tonight on Smoke and Solder, well, I've got a, a new device here, new to me anyway. It's an analog discovery tube from Digilent. This thing is a laboratory and a pocket-sized box here. It does so many different things. I'm not going to throw away my oscilloscopes, but this one gives you a, well, a dual-channel oscilloscope up to 30 megahertz, plus a lot more lab equipment right in the palm of your hand. You know, 2020 has been tough all over. I'm looking forward to 2021 and the projects that I might get into then. And one of them is going to be the Analog Discovery 2 from Digilent. I just received this as part of the 2020 package for the Homebrew Heroes Award that I just received. It's a pocket-sized device that has a USB port, that has an external power supply, which is optional, and headphone or audio amplifier outputs on it. And then on the end here is a two-row multi-pin header where you can connect uh, various accessories. It comes with a set of fly wires that you can plug in, and it gives you a lot of different functions here that you can connect directly to the device. There's also an optional BNC adapter board available as well. It's not very expensive, about 20 bucks. That gives you the ability to use scope probes or higher frequency measurements due to the BNC connectors. The Analog Discovery 2 is essentially a Xilinx FPGA in here that does all the measurements. The analog front end for it comes from analog devices chips. Digilent is the manufacturer. They are a division of National Instruments, which is a very reputable measurement company. What does this do? Well, it does a lot of test and measurement jobs. You know, since it's using an FPGA in there, really, it's wide open. The software is what controls what functions you might have here, and it's continuously being developed and improved upon by Digilent. The software is free. It's called Waveforms, and it works exclusively with the Analog Discovery 2 or the Digital Discovery, which is a similar device without analog inputs on it. There's also third-party software available as well. With Analog Discovery 2, you get a dual-channel oscilloscope that's good out to 30 megahertz when used with the BNC adapter, a little less than that when used with the fly wires. It's a 14-bit A to D converter. And a little unusual, this has differential inputs on it, so it's not single-ended unless you use a BNC adapter board. It can measure plus or minus 25 volts. There's 100 mega samples per second, so it is pretty high quality. There's also a built-in dual-channel waveform generator, or you might call it an arbitrary function generator. That's also 100 mega samples per second, 14-bit DAC. It can do plus and minus 5 volts. There's a 12 megahertz signal bandwidth and standard and user-defined waveforms as well, so you can create whatever kind of signal you need with this device. It can also be used as a network analyzer a spectrum analyzer, a voltmeter, dual programmable power supplies, 0 to 5 volts and 0 to minus 5 volts DC. And if you add an external power supply, it can source up to 700 milliamps. It's also a logic and bus analyzer, a pattern generator, it's got 16 discrete I.O. output signals. 
that you can use with virtual buttons or switches or LED displays. It has external triggers in and out. And as we mentioned, a headphone speaker jack so that you can connect the analog signals to standard audio connectors. And that's just the things listed in the literature here. As I mentioned, they're constantly improving this and upgrading the software. And there are third-party options out there as well. It also has a powerful script generator built in it so that you can create scripts for certain test conditions that you've got just uh, really off the charts. And it was originally created as a teaching and learning tool, but it seems to be equally at home in a lot of laboratories. So there you go. That's what I'm going to be playing with over the holidays. And wow, you know, I really hadn't had a chance to tear into that until this week. And uh, so many ideas and things that I didn't really know I had anything that would measure them. And now I do. I want to remind you that uh, in around the middle of every month, we're doing an episode of AmateurLogic.tv. And that's where you'll find me. And this month, unlike all the others, except that it's December, that means that we're going to have a special Christmas episode that we do every year. That'll be this Friday night, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, 0200 UTC. Uh, Mike VE3MIC, of course, Tommy N5ZNO, and Emil KE5QKR will uh, join me there. And we really... Um, we really have a nice Christmas show every year. A little bit of craziness will ensue in there. So if you're looking for something to do Friday night, join us at 8 Central, AmateurLogic.tv. And now here's the man with all the ham radio news that you need, Don Wilbanks. Hey, thanks, George. And that is the coolest little piece of test gear that you got. Congratulations on the award. Uh, it's amazing what they're cramming into a small little plastic box these days. And when I was in high school, 40 something years ago, taking electronics at the at the uh, at the local vocational technical center, uh, we could uh, couldn't even dream about things like that. And now it's it's available and uh, just just it's a brave new world. And I can't imagine what the next 40 years are going to bring. But let's go ahead and uh, get a look at the news of the week from Amateur Radio Newsline. <laughs> From Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 2250, these are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, December 16th, 2020. We begin this week with news that The Sun put on quite a show in recent days. Newsline anchor Stephen Ken for tonight, WB has more. The Northern Lights put on a big sky show for the northern portion of the United States following a coronal mass ejections collision with the Earth's magnetosphere. Starting on Wednesday, December 9th, northern U.S. residents had their eyes on the sky for the aurora borealis from Washington State and Oregon all the way east to Maine. The Space Weather Prediction Center of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said the light show was set off after a solar flare erupted from a sunspot on Monday, December 7th. Though the conditions may have created a thing of beauty in the sky, amateurs may not have felt the same way dealing with intermittent conditions on the HF bands. In Japan, fire to a major semiconductor factory is expected to disrupt the availability of audio components worldwide. An inferno that raged recently at a major audio semiconductor factory in Japan is expected to have a stifling effect on the supply chain for both professional and upscale consumer audio components, including amateur radio equipment. The three-day blaze consumed the AKM factory over an 82-hour period in late October. By the time firefighters got it under control, the building was so damaged, operations had to be shut. AKM is known for its DACs and ADCs, the digital to analog converter chips and analog to digital converter chips used in the music and film industries and in radios. Semi Media, a news source for the semiconductor industry, reported that production of the chips is not likely to resume for at least six months, prompting companies reliant on AKM to anticipate being caught short. In November, however, AKM issued a statement saying it plans to work with cooperating manufacturers and will prepare to outsource its production of the chips. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Graham Kemp, VK4BB. In a part of Oklahoma with a proud space legacy, a new generation is touching the sky, this time via amateur radio. 
There's been a nice bit of astronaut history going on for years in Tecumseh, Oklahoma, and perhaps no one knows that better right now than the students in the Tecumseh High School Amateur Radio Club, K5DHS. On Friday, December 4th, they added themselves to that local history book when they spoke over amateur radio with ISS astronaut Shannon Walker, KD5DXB. The nine-minute Q&A happened over a two-meter station built by 20 ham radio operators. Teacher Bill Crow, K5LUO, led the group in its efforts to get the station with its beam and rotators up and running. One by one, the students quickly stepped up to the microphone inside the school auditorium to deliver their questions to Shannon Walker, who this year became the first woman to fly inside a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule. Making space history seems to be a natural for this part of Oklahoma. Gordon Cooper, one of the original Mercury 7 astronauts, was a native of nearby Shawnee and attended Shawnee High School, where he played on the school's football team. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Mike Askins, KE5CXP. Mike and I are both proud graduates of Shawnee High School, class of 1978, and I studied electronics at Gordon Cooper Votech in my junior and senior years. It's now known as Gordon Cooper Technology Center. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news for four decades and counting at arnewsline.org. With Stephen Kenford and 8WB, Graham Kemp, VK4BB, Mike Askins, KE5CXP, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York, and our news team across the globe. I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. Yeah, we're uh, quite proud of, uh, of uh, L. Gordon Cooper. Leroy, I believe, is his, is his actual first name. Uh, one of the original uh, Mercury 7 astronauts coming from my hometown, Shawnee, Oklahoma. Very proud of him and uh, uh, naming a lot of things around uh, central Oklahoma after Mr. Cooper. All right, we do not have a solar update from uh, Dr. Scove tonight, uh, but of course you can always check her out at spaceweatherwoman.com. There it is right there. And of course on Twitter, that's where she uh, posts the most up-to-the-minute information, uh, at Tamitha Scove on Twitter. So we, of course, thank her for uh, for, for for everything that she does for us here at Ham Nation as well. Uh, back to you, Bob. That's all I have for you tonight. Well, it's uh, wonderful to know that all of that stuff's still up and running, even during all this nonsense. Boy, I don't, I really don't know <laughs> where we're going from here, but we'll find out. But Amanda has a wonderful segment here. A great guest we all know and love from. Last man standing. So, uh, Amanda, take it away. You and John, tell us what's going on out there. Well, thank you. I, I did reach out to John a little bit uh, last minute here, but I'd like to introduce uh, John Amadeo, AA6J8. Nope. Yes, AA6J8. I almost got that right, <laughs> yes. John. Hi, guys. Yeah, it's great to see all the Ham Nation regulars, and it's great to be back on the show. It's been a long time. And, Amanda, you were on my show about a year ago, so good to see you. I know we saw all these memories pop up in Facebook and we were so sad that we couldn't do it again this year. And that, that really brings me to um, my biggest question. I think a lot of operators are wondering the same thing is, well, we know that Last Man Standing is still filming now. You're back on the set. Are you guys going to be operating from there? Do you do you, do you have that set up going? Are you operating or um, can you well, in every, the future? Everything is up and running. You know, we, we've always had everything live the whole time we've been uh, shooting the show. And I spoke to the, the official voice of uh, the Last Man Standing Amateur Radio Club. is really Rob, AA6RA. You've met him, of course. And uh, he's willing to come in on like a Saturday. You know, the, the stage is a very restricted place, as you can imagine, with all of us wearing our face shields and masks and uh, standing behind partitions. But it seems like the best thing to do would be for us to create an operating day, like on a weekend, when none of the cast is around and none of the other crew members are around, just to keep us safe and distant from one another. That that would be amazing. We I think we would all appreciate that. And thank you, Rob, if you're watching, for <laughs> offering to do that. And uh, I know you you had taken the station to your home this summer to to play around with, and uh, you you made some pretty good contacts and had some fun, didn't you? Oh, I, I had. Uh, I mean, I have a great station right now. I've got a, a an IC seventy six ten to my right and an IC fifty one hundred to my left, and a few other things around. But over the summer, I had all of that plus a 7300 and a 9700 and everything else from the last man standing station. So it was, it was, a, it was a mega station. Um, and it was a lot of fun, and I did make a lot of contacts on it. Um, but, of course, we, we really do want to make contacts from the station, which, by the way, I see in, in the pictures backwards. <laughs> it's very funny. Um, 
my my fault. Um, so we will we'll, we're going to make it happen. We'll get on the radio probably a couple of times. We're shooting our twelfth show. Started our twelfth show today of the twenty one that we're shooting for season nine. So we're about halfway through. And I think in the holidays, over the holidays, or just after, we'll get on the stage and make some contacts with those people that really would like to talk to KA6LMS and to the radios that you see behind Tim Allen every week on our show. That's amazing. Um, I do have one. I don't think you'll give me the spoiler, but I'm going to ask anyways. In this last season, season nine of Last Man Standing, do do we get to see any more ham radio with um, Mike Baxter? Oh, you know, um, honestly, I, I don't know any more than you guys know because I know what I've shot. And so far, has he been on the radio? There might have been one brush with the radio. Um, but I never know what the writers are going to give us. Um, and I don't question them. They're very funny, very smart people. So I kind of nudge them toward it, but I can't make them do it. And, um, you know, we'll keep our fingers crossed. We, we do on the show use radio a lot. It isn't necessarily amateur radio, but we're on the radio all day long, every day, including Tim. Because we communicate with the stage and you've been to my office, so you see it's like a control center. We talk to the stage all day on radios. We talk to Tim in his dressing room on radios. So we get a lot of radio time, but it isn't a lot of ham radio time. And, uh, you know, we'll have to see what we can do. We'll try. (laughs) All right. Well, that's all we can ask for. Uh, Everyone, I want to let you know, John put together an awesome video on very short notice and uh john i'm just gonna let you introduce this because i'd like to thank you so much for doing it oh thanks amanda you know i i there's a there's a famous quote that says if i had more time i could have written a shorter letter and that's exactly what this is it's a very short video about last man standing and the amateur radio operator i could i could do an hour-long documentary i've got hundreds of hours of footage and photos and so many incredible guest operators, starting with especially Rob, who's part of our club, and of course Ray, who provided most of the gear and and the Comet and Radio Waves and LDG and MFJ. Everybody's been so kind to us. They threw this little video together. I think I'll do something much longer and post it on our Facebook page. But for now, I, I give you this little sort of two and a half or three minute long video. Hi, Ham Nation viewers. John Amadeo, AA6JA here. I'm one of the producers of the Last Man Standing television series. Some of you may know that on the show, Tim Allen's character, Mike Baxter, is a ham with a fictitious call sign, KA0XTT. Mike, KA0XTT. Just a little shout out. Anybody having a good time here on Thanksgiving? (laughs) Anybody hiding in their basement to avoid their relatives? In real life, Tim has his own real call sign. Because of our interest in amateur radio, we've always had radio equipment on the show. A number of crew members are licensed, so of course we hook the radios up to antennas on the roof of the stage. As we enter our ninth and possibly final season, I want to give a shout out to Ham Nation. From the show's beginning, we've enjoyed a special relationship with Ham Nation, starting with Bob and Gordon's visit to our set in season one. Uh, K9 EID. Hi, Bob. Boy, fancy meeting you here. Gordo, WB6NOA. What's new, Bob? Go ahead. Hey, Gordo, WB6NOA. This is K9 EID. It's nice to hear you. Boy, you sound great. I hope everything is going well and uh, things are good uh, out there in good old California. When we formed our club station, KA6LMS, Amanda and Jeff dropped by as special guest operators to make some contacts. 73 QRZ, Kilo Alpha 6, Lima, Mike Sierra. Whiskey Uniform 9 Bravo. Whiskey Uniform 9 Bravo, you just pushed me out of my chair. Real strong signal, you're 5 and 9. <laughs> Thank you, you're 5 and 9 near Phoenix. All right, thanks for Phoenix there, 73 QRZ, KA6, LMS. Our club members and special guest operators have made a number of activations from the actual radios on set. Ham Nation co-hosts often check into our weekly activations to lend their support. Yeah, November, Victor, 9, Lima, hey, Laura. Hi, is this Valerie? It is. How you doing? <laughs> Good. I'm looking at your uh, at your card here on the wall. Um, thank you for the contact. You sound great. Yeah, yeah. You guys are really loud here, but I got a six over six over six uh, lobster There's stack. There's a huge right antenna. Head, so. <laughs> you sound good. Uh, keep up the good work. Oh, we're on a dipole. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're on a dipole here. We especially appreciate Bob's assistance. 
And if you watch the show, you may see a number of Heil mics in use. is the promised Neverland. Demons breed humans to be super intelligent because the smarter they are, the more delicious they taste. Of course, in each of our nine seasons, we've had the latest in ICOM gear, thanks to the support of Ray Novak. And, uh, the problems I had uh, working uh, HF mobile over. This season, we have an IC7300 side by side with an IC9700. Over the years, we've had a lot of different common antennas on the roof, thanks to Mick Swartnick. Here's our Comet GP6 for 2 meters and 70 centimeters. And here's our Comet GP95 for 2 meters, 70 centimeters, and 1.2 gigahertz. This season, we're using a Radio Waves 40 meter, 20 meter fan dipole, thanks to Emmett Hohensey. As we shoot our 21 episodes for season 9, we'll be looking for opportunities to work your station and get you that special KA6 LMS QSL card. So from Last Man Standing to Ham Nation, we say thanks and 7-3. That was such a great video. Thank you so much, John. <laughs> I think we only needed the short letter. Um, if you put yeah. together something else, we all look forward to it on Facebook. But uh, as we all know, it's so crazy. It, last Man Standing, we were all huge fans uh, when they were on ABC, and then uh, it was canceled, and now it's on Fox. So uh, <laughs> we all look for these new beginnings. Thank you so much. And um, you guys have had a wonderful running, and oh, I yeah. hope that Season 9 is your best yet. So so Thank far so it is. It's one of our here. favorite seasons. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm so glad to see you guys again. All right. Uh, Bob, any final words before we let John go? Well, as always, John, thank you for the support that you guys give us. And it's kind of uh, uh, kind of crazy if we're uh, uh, not going to see you this next year. But you'll be somewhere, I'm sure, after this one. But thank you for coming on the show tonight. And the video is great. So we'll uh, we'll look out the see where you are on the bands and try to work you before we shut her all down there. Well, thanks so much, Amanda, for making that happen. And uh, we have a very special guest tonight. It's Mr. Leo Laporte. Hi, Leo. How are you? Hey, Bob. Hey, wait a minute. Let me put it so you can see this here. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't have the Christmas hat. I didn't get the memo ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. How many shows have you done today? That's our same situation. Oh, this is just the third. It's not a big deal. <laughs> well, I wanted to uh, to have you on here and uh, let you tell us a little news about what's going on there at the Twit Studio. We're going to make a little transition, and I know this is a uh, been a difficult year for everybody, none the none the less for us. But uh, we're going to be canceling a number of shows. And uh, we called you, said, well, you know, we'd like to kind of stop doing Ham Nation. But the good news is uh, you guys want to keep doing it. And I'm really pleased about that. And I guess you probably have a little bit of gear you could use to keep Ham Nation going. So I'm not sure what the details are on that. But uh, I, I, I wanted to stop by and wish everybody a very happy holiday and uh, and and say that, you know, you're you're going to presumably stay on the same feed. Anybody who subscribes to Ham Nation now will continue to get the show, uh, but it's just not going to be produced out of the Twit uh, Studios uh, after the uh, year end. Well, we were very lucky that uh, actually it was uh, it was Ray Novak that. Uh, oh, I love Ray. Give, he gave me a little uh, little hint. He said you should talk to to Josh, who is uh, uh, has a wonderful. Uh, podcast and uh, webcast going KI6NAZ. So I thought, why not? So we've been talking and the next thing you know, Josh got together with all of our regulars here and nothing's going to change. It, Good. Um, Good. it, you know, it, it well, I, I kind of look at it uh, kind of like this where uh, we're moving. And, uh, <laughs> nice truck you got there. <laughs> I mean, we're, 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 That's we're awesome. <laughs> no, no problem at all. It's not going away. We just, just live moving. But uh, it, who knows? it really won't make much difference, uh, I think, to anybody as far as the, if you're subscribing to the show, because uh, you will still have the feeds. It'll still come into your podcast application the same as before. You know, you guys aren't even in a, in our studios, so you won't even. It'll still look exactly the same yeah. from uh, that point of view. 
I, I feel bad about it, but we have to cut back uh, considerably. It's been a very difficult year for us. And uh, we knew you guys had, of all the people we we, we, uh, we uh, work with, you had the most capability of keeping the show going. Well, we've, we've really enjoyed it. It's been nine years and, and Can plus. Can you believe that? Yeah, it, it, it's crazy that. And visited. tell Ray he can't have any of that ICOM gear back. I just want you to know. I'm keeping that. <laughs> he's in the corner here. And, uh, he uh, he's listening, and uh, he'll be on in just a second. Thank but, you, Ray. Uh, I love that stuff. Is <laughs> he's, he's, he's done so much uh, for ham radio, and not only these shows, but so many other things Absolutely. that he does. Yeah. But good for his company, I guess. Is the way you look at it. <laughs> I love my ICOM radios. You bet. You bet. Well, Bob, it's I, always I, a pleasure. I love working with you. Uh, please give my regards to the entire team. Wish them all a very, very happy holiday. And an 8-8 eight, eight, as well as a 7-3. You got that. Okay, well, thanks so much for all these great years. And uh, okay, we'll stay in touch and hook up along the way somewhere. I, so, I expect to see you guys you. as soon as you can travel. Have a nice holiday season there all right. with all the other uh, uh, TWID employees. Merry Christmas, Bob. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there, there you heard it from uh, from Leo. We're we're not canceling this show. We're not, not at all. We're just moving it down the street. So you uh, uh, you don't have to get crazy. But uh, I want to bring Josh up here, and uh, Josh is uh, he's just wonderful about taking over things. Josh, how are you doing? Good to hear you here. See you. I'm doing good, Bob. It's good to see you. How are you doing? We're good, and you're getting all ready to go and move all of this. Uh, I guess we're going to go down the beach to <laughs> to where you are, and yep. I appreciate it very, very much. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, where we can find you. If, if somebody comes in and say, oh, wait a minute, you're not on Twit, how do they find the new Ham Nation? Uh, what the new show is January 6th or so on. So take it over a little bit and tell us some of the some things that, that are going to happen. So we are going to be live on the Ham Radio Crash Course. We're going to do it at the same time that you're used to, which is uh, 8 p.m. Central Wednesday. So same same time, but we'll be live on YouTube. So it'll be a bit different. Obviously, I'm not a professional, but we're going to have a lot of fun and uh, we'll, we'll keep the show going. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it. And again, we'll be starting the year off January 6th. Yeah, and uh, Randy's going to uh, take a little bigger part in Ham Nation also and uh, – Let's see if Randy's with us here tonight. He's a, he's a wonderful hey. guy. There you go. Hi, Randy. Hi, guys. You, uh, you already have some content uh, in the can and ready to go, right? Well, I'll be cranking it out here and working on some stuff. And uh, just like to say thanks to Leo and Twit and all the people there for all these years. They've uh, provided a, a great uh, – you know, opportunity for all the, all the ham radio people. And, uh, you know, I visited down to the studio there many times and really enjoyed, you know, hanging out with the, the crew there. So it's a great bunch. Yeah. I, we've been very fortunate that, uh, they've been able to support the, uh, the whole work. And of course, one of the guys that keeps this all going and he's kind of in the background a little bit is Ray Novak with ICOM and without him, uh, we wouldn't have a show on Twit because he supported all of that. So, Ray, I really appreciate you doing this, and I understand you also have been with Josh for a while because it was your idea that we got together, so I have to really thank you. Well, I can't really say that I've been doing a whole lot with Josh. Josh has kind of become a 705 addict, and <laughs> there were a couple of different concepts that we would bounce off of each other. So that's how I got to really know him and, and following his ham radio crash course uh, YouTube channel. So I felt if he could pull off that successful channel that he might be able to, to do the have the same success and help broaden the viewership with uh, Ham Nation as well. So I'm, I'm glad everybody's been flexible to make this adjustment. Yeah, I'm really thrilled because uh, in short time that we've known each other, we've had some fun and it's going to, I think it, it'll be great. So we're going to look forward to a, a lot of things happening on Ham Nation. And I, again, I really appreciate you uh, being with us in the, all these years. 
and we'll be doing some other things that's for sure and it, uh, it's i think it's going to be fun josh have you got any uh, thing you can tell the the viewers like if they want to they're sitting around and say oh wait a minute ham nation's on what do they do and where do they go uh, you go to YouTube and you just search for Ham Radio Crash Course. My landing page there will show the upcoming live streams. And we'll, of course, have an upcoming stream for any of the episodes that we are planning for Ham Nation. Uh, I do simulcast. I'm, I am watching the chat. So thank you, chat room, for the questions. We will be simulcasting to Twitch as well as YouTube. And, and the name is the same. Ham Radio Crash Course is the best way to find it. Mm -hmm. And it's Ham Radio Crash Course right that's right yes you got it thanks just go to youtube and dial it up and uh, ham nation will be on your site there well, that'll be great we'll, uh, we'll look forward to this because i think we're going to really have a lot of fun together Not that we haven't for the past nine years of course but uh, uh it's going to be a little bit different and who knows where we go from there but uh i really appreciate you uh being available and uh making it happen for us so that's great any uh, closing words that we should uh know and uh, look to josh uh boy i just hope everybody's staying safe you know we're running into a time where you know we're wanting to get with family and friends and just stay safe and you know watch uh, i guess keep watching the ham radio videos online and we'll be looking for you on january 6th Okay, well, again, thank you so much. And uh, if I don't talk to you, but I'm sure we will before Christmas, you, uh, you and your family have a wonderful, uh, a wonderful holiday, and we'll be back there on January sixth at eight o'clock Central Time. Correct? That's correct. All right. Well, I think that pretty much winds it uh, down. Uh, Amanda, did you have anything else? Randy, any of you that are still hanging around? Do yes. I have any? Yes, I got a couple of things I'd just like to mention. I'm looking forward to working with Josh. I've watched a lot of his content for many years. He has a huge following, but I'd just like to plug a couple of things coming up here. One is Contest University has a propagation summit being sponsored by uh, ICOM, Mr. Ray, and DX Engineering, Mr. Tim. So that's uh, January 23rd. You can go to Contest University webpage here and click on to take in uh, to take and sign up and register for the seminar. And uh, they have four presentations going on. So with the band starting to open up, this is a good time to, uh, to learn something new. And um, earlier in the show, uh, show Gordo was talking about the ISS with Slow Scan TV and uh, just you know hot off the wire here. Um, I see that there's an ISS T SSTV special event scheduled, and this is going to be a good one because it's a long one, December 24th through the 31st. So a whole week, you know, you know, a lot of times they have these events and they're just over Russia. So I imagine this will be on 24 hours a day for, you know, seven days or so. So, um, so, to, uh, so do some Googling around and uh, learn how to do this. The AMSAT UK site has some pretty good information on receiving the slow scan TV. So it's on two meters, 145.80, and uh, see if you can get some pictures. It's, it's a lot of fun. So uh, I think that's all I have, Bob. Okay, well, we'll look forward to uh, seeing uh, more happening after the 6th. That'll be fun. I do want to say one thing before we leave. We have appreciated everything that uh, – Leo and the Twit Studios have done, but there's uh, one person that's kept all this happening, and that's Victor. Uh, we drive him nuts every <laughs> every Wednesday because I, I do think we're the most complicated show that Twit has with all the switching and all the guests, but uh, uh, he manages to take care of it, and a lot of it's on the fly. <laughs> so he's uh, he's been marvelous. So uh, Thanks, Victor. I just thank you so very much, and I wish you and your family the best, and hope you have a good holiday. So uh, we'll try to drop in once in a while and see what you're up to. But uh, thank you from everybody that's involved, including all of our audience on Ham Nation. We appreciate your talent and your time. So thank it's, you so much. It's been a pleasure, Bob, and for Bob, everybody, working with everybody. So.
And it's hey, not so bad. There's, there's, it's only a short list today. So, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ray. <laughs> I, I'd like to second that, Bob. I, I, taking a look at the meeting that you and I first had, which was at Hamcom in Dallas in June, and it doesn't seem like it was 11 years ago, but I'd greatly appreciate the opportunity that Leo and everybody at the Twit Studios has provided for us to be able to get information out about this wonderful hobby and looking at everything that they've done for the show. I greatly appreciate it, Leo, and good luck on your future endeavor, sir. Yeah, it's, uh, I think in all, on all of our hearts because they've been great and it's been fun to get together. But I want to remind everybody, don't get all upset. You know, we are not leaving the air. We're just like moving down the block a little bit. So uh, that's that. That's something that I want you to, to understand that don't don't spread the word. Oh, Ham Nation's gone. No. In fact, you know what? The way it's looking we might be able to grow this quite a bit more because I've got a couple of other people that will come aboard. So uh, Josh himself has a <laughs> look at his uh, website or at his videos and see what he's been able to achieve. And now when he brings all of us crazies in there, who knows what will happen. But uh, we're really fortunate to have him. Well, I think that pretty much winds it up. And I do wish all of you a very safe holiday. This uh, pandemic is not over. Uh, so many people say, oh, they're going to get the, uh, the vaccine and, you know, like uh, in a couple of months. Will be No, I honestly, I'm not trying to put doom on it, but we have to really be careful because it's not over. And uh, uh, so we'll have to continue on. And last but not least, please know that there are some really great things happening with Zoom. And you will want to take care of that because if you have a club, send me a date. Tell me, give me a couple of them. And uh, that, that's all I'm doing these days. And it's, it's, it's mind boggling uh, how these clubs just come clamoring because they don't have the information. Uh, uh, there's nothing that really helps them. But we can do that on Zoom. So, uh so you, you want to make sure that uh, you let me know about that. Does Randy want to tie the ribbons on it? Yes. Well, I just well, <laughs> okay. I just want to mention, <clears throat> mention a couple of the nets tonight. Looks like Amanda's not uh, feeding the, you know, the Twitch studio. So I see the 40-meter net on 7192 and the 80-meter um, net on 3813. So. Okay. Fire up your radios. Make I'll go some check it out. Well, 7-3, everyone, and we will talk to you January the 6th or with some of this stuff behind us. You never know where we'll find it. So take care, and we'll look forward to visiting your club Zoom, and uh, have a great holiday season. Talk to you on the 6th. Bye-bye for now. Thanks to everybody to put this last show together. <laughs>